Welcome to Trigger Warning with your host, Chris Brumbles. Are you tired of the professional liars of fake news and far-left radicals? Are you ready for truth and common sense? The insanity and divisiveness of political correctness and identity politics have no place here. So welcome to Trigger Warning, where free speech is free speech, not racism. There are no participation trophies, so if your mind is weak, grab your binky, head to your safe space, consider this your trigger warning. Good afternoon, Columbia County, and welcome to Trigger Warning, where we embrace truth and common sense and reject the un-American and right-killing, insane policies of political correctness and other leftist tactics. A couple of days ago, my wife was reading comments off the internet to me when she came across one about abortion. The person commented went on about how it was her body, her life, and her choice. It is true that you own your own body, and your life is yours. It's also true that it is your choice, but what is your choice? <clears throat> Our country was founded on the laws of nature and nature's God under Judeo-Christian principles. Our founders knew that the only reliable basis on which to found a government was on a foundation that never changes, hence the laws of nature and nature's God. Cicero defined natural law as true law, and he went on to say, true law is right reason in agreement with nature. It is of universal application, unchanging and under everlasting. It summons to duty by its commands and averts from wrongdoing by its provisions. It is a sin to alter this law, nor is it allowable to repeat peel any part of it, and it is impossible to abolish entirely. We cannot be free from its obligations by Senate or people, and we need not look outside ourselves for an expounder or interpreter of it. And there will not be different laws at Rome and Athens, or different laws now or in the future. But one eternal and unchangeable law will be valid for all nations and all times. And there will be one master and ruler, that is God, over us all. For he is the author of this law, its promulgator, and its enforce, forcing judge. Whoever is disobedient is fleeing from himself and denying his human nature. And by reason of this very fact, we will suffer the worst punishment. He will suffer. It can also be defined as the rules of moral conduct implanted by nature in the human mind, forming the proper basis for, for and being superior to all written laws, the will of God revealed to man through his conscience. The founders learned about natural law by studying history and politics through the ages. It was a familiar thread that ran through the Greek and Roman philosophers such as Aristotle, Demosthenes, Demosthenes, Seneca, and especially Cicero. The Anglo-Saxon tradition of common law and many of the European and English political philosophers such as Sir Edward Coke, John Locke, Baron Charles de Montague, and William Blackstone. But the most ancient and influential source our founders drew this understanding of human nature was from the Holy Bible. Look what Blackstone had to say. Man considered as a creature must necessarily be subject to the law of his creator. There are eternal immutable laws of good and evil to, to which his creator himself and all his dispensations conforms and which he has enabled human reason to discover so far as they are necessary for the conduct of human actions. Such among others are these principles what we should, that we should live honestly, should hurt nobody, and should render to everyone his due. The law of nature is binding over the globe, in all countries, and at all times. No human laws are any validity, validity if contrary to this." End quote. Wouldn't it be nice if our elected employees comprehended natural or true law? If they understood that the powers we loaned them were to protect the God-given rights and that all laws that violate natural law are void ab initio that laws are only supposed to be old and good, not to plunder our wealth and rights, nor to nanny or lord over us. This is why our founders said that if, a, in, if our Republican form of government under the rule of law was to survive, we would need to elect moral and religious people to office. We have been failing for some time now. We need to start correcting that starting next month. So back to the abortion thing. Remember the common 
commentator or commenter, excuse me, on the internet said that it was her body, her life, and her choice. She was right on by all three accounts, but not the way she meant it. Everyone o owns their body as we have a right to our property and a property in our rights, and our property to life is our most important property. <laughs> That's a lot of properties. And it's the first law of nature, and the defense of it is the palladium of liberty. So yes, she owns her body and has a right to her life, since you are supposed to be able to do whatever you want as long as it doesn't affect someone else's liberty, she does get to choose what to do with that life. As long as, like, like I said, as long as it doesn't affect anyone else's liberty. Here's where the chick is left, is left or wrong thinking. Since she has a right to choose what she does as long as it doesn't affect other people's rights, she could simply choose to keep her legs together. But once she chooses the other option and gets pregnant, she now has an obligation and a responsibility to care for that child. The child is also a person and has natural rights too. And as I have said, the first law of nature is the right to life. If this woman was to abort the child, she would be not be celebrating her natural rights, she would be violating the child's natural born rights. Remember, I'll say it again, we don't operate under the assumption of all out freedom. Our founder's goal was liberty, which is freedom plus morality, which means you should be able to do anything that doesn't tread on other people's rights. And aborting a defensive, defenseless baby is definitely treading on that baby's rights. I understand that people get themselves in a bind sometimes, but that is because of bad choices the majority of the time. And we need to get back to being accountable for our actions. Yes, you have a choice, but only but once you make a bad choice, it doesn't give you the right to make the ultimate and final choice for a baby. The Supreme Court, which was wrong many times, was totally wrong when they decided to legislate from the bench and allow a murder of convenience. Remember, all laws that violate God's law have no validity, according to William Blackstone. Well, I have a great guest on the show today. He has achieved a lot in his life. Today's guest is Alan Corwin. Alan is the founder of Bloomberg Press, which was founded in 1988 and is the largest publisher and distributor of gun law books in the nation. Alice is an author of 14 books, 10 of them which are, the topics are gun, gun laws or gun policy. Alan, Alan is also a great political activist who has been fighting for your rights for many years. Alan has been invited twice to the Supreme Court of the United States to observe oral arguments in Second Amendment gun rights cases. Alan witnessed the D.C. versus Heller case that affirmed the individual right of a citizen to keep and bear arms. This case was subject to the subject of his 11th book, The Heller Case, Gun Rights Affirmed. Mr. Corwin was also invited to McDonald versus Chicago, which affirmed that the Second Amendment does apply to the states. His firm, Bloomberg Press, was an amicus. With his wife, Cheryl, Allen owns and operates GunLaws.com and Bloomberg Press in his home state of Arizona. If you've never gone to GunLaws.com, I encourage you to go to do so, as there are some great books there and uh, at a great reasonable, reasonable price. And there are many other free resources there for those who wish to educate themselves. Allen was the founder and two-term president of Arizona Book Publishing Association. He has received two national awards for publicity work as a member of the Society for Technical Communication. He is a past board member of the Arizona chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists. He is also the winner of the 2013 Defender of Liberty Award. Allen has made more than a thousand radio and television appearances and has been making a good living as a free freelance writer since 1984. To tell you the truth, he has so many accolades that we could spend hours talking about him. So right now we are going to take a break, but when we come back, we will be talking with Alan Corwin, a great patriot, author, civil and political rights activist, and defender of your rights. So stay tuned. We will be right back with Trigger Warning. Hello, all you Triglets out there listening to Trigger Warning. This is where we reject political correctness and left-wing insanity, but instead we embrace truth and common sense. You know, there is only one gun group in Oregon that will not compromise on your rights, 
and that is Oregon Firearms Federation. With all the trickery and evil bills that come from the supermajority in Salem, you need a friend who will keep you informed of these nefarious plans to plunder your rights. If you have not done so, don't delay. Go to OregonFirearms.org and sign up for the free alerts. It will cost you nothing and you will get the truth on what's going on in Salem. There is absolutely no common sense in giving up your rights, so sign up for our email alerts, and if you want to donate, we won't complain, and it will be put to good use. Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no-compromise gun group in the state of Oregon, at OregonFirearms.org. Sign up today. The Columbia County Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance, Measure 5-278, will be on the ballot this November. Make sure to vote yes on Measure 5-278 so that you can help defend the rights of you and your children. Your rights have been under attack in Salem at every session for as long as I can remember. And these attempts at control that will not affect criminals will not stop. So let's make our county a sanctuary for guns and pass the county law that protects your rights. Vote yes on the SASO Measure 5-278. While you are protecting our county, let's remember to fire Brad Witt, who only represents himself, not you. Let's elect Brian Stout to represent District 31, a family man and a businessman. He feels the same pains that you do. Let's send someone to Salem who is in touch with the people and will actually represent you. Elect Brian Stout as District 31 representative. Are you as tired as I am of the constant propaganda from the lamestream media? Would you like to get your news from a trusted source? How about two sources? Go to Readout News out of Northern Idaho where citizen journalists actually fact check and do research. Readout News Oregon may even be coming here soon. Northwest Observer, another great news source that tells it like it is. Give it a try. I'm sure you will be impressed. It's time that we have truth in the news. So go to Northwest Observer and give Readout News a shot, and you have nothing to lose and only facts to gain. Don't forget to vote in the upcoming election. The majority does not win elections. The majority of the minority who votes does. Your vote counts, so make sure that your voice is heard and get out to vote. Now, back to trigger warning, where we reject political correctness and left-wing nut job policies, and we embrace truth and common sense. With your host, Chris Brumbles. Welcome back, Columbia County, to Trigger Warning. We have a great man on the phone today, Mr. Alan Corwin. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Chris. How are you? I'm doing good. And uh, so how's things going in Phoenix, Arizona? Are they as crazy as they are up here around Portland? (laughs) Nothing is as bad as Portland. And in Arizona, we're all pretty well armed, so I'm not sure they could get away with what they're doing over there. Have they been going after your guns like they have? I mean, they've been. we had this thing 978 last year they tried to push on us, and it pretty much every gun illegal unless you want to, you know, sign up for a get put on a list so they can come take them later. Have they tried anything like that in Arizona? Um, There's a plan for that nationally that the Democrats have in both houses of Congress. Because the media has been completely corrupted, most of the public isn't aware of it. But if the Democrats gain control, if God forbid there's a blue sweep, um, they plan on outlawing everything you can have. And they've done it in some very, very serious and undermined, underhanded ways. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've read the bills, Chris, but H.R. 5717 makes it illegal to have a gun without a federal license. Have you heard about that? I'm actually following that bill, and I got an update on it yesterday that there was more coast conspiracies (laughs) put their names on the list. Right, and, and it doesn't matter because the Democrats passed it in the House where they have a majority. Right. They introduced it in the Senate but couldn't pass it because they don't have a majority. And when you read the bill, it is so deceptive. It outlaws guns, uh, rifles with a pistol grip. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's on page 2 or 3. On page 13, it says a pistol grip is anything that can function as a grip. Well, what gun doesn't have a grip? 
Oh, yeah. So, it's, so it's, they have a list of guns you can't have, but the list is a smokescreen because it doesn't matter. If a gun has a magazine and a grip, a grip, then it's illegal. <laughs> oh, they did some so, cr- crazy stuff here, too, like that. Sorry. So the that. only thing they don't have is the White House for a signature mm-hmm. and a, a majority in the Senate. Right. But if they did, it would be illegal to have a gun with a grip. And I know your listeners must be freaking out. This news has been uh, proposed nationwide, n- not proposed, has been promoted nationwide by JPFO, Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, mm-hmm. so that the world would know about it. But the media doesn't pick up the press releases. The membership of JPFO.org is well aware and is very active to defeat this thing, but it's all about the votes. If you have the votes, we can suppress it. If you don't have the votes, the Democrats' plans, regardless of what they say, we're coming for your AR-15. That's nonsense. Nonsense. He can say that on stage, but when you look at the bill, we're coming after all your guns. That's right. That's right. You know, they even put in one of their... This this 978 they tried to pass here last year. They... (laughs) So I, you know Kevin Stir. Kevin and I went to this. Yes, Kevin and I are good friends. Yeah, we sell his guy. book. Yeah, he he actually dedicated his first book to you. So I, I figured oh. you were friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, at gunlaws.com, which is my website, gunlaws.com, we sell books on gun law. And Kevin and I worked together when he was putting his book together on gun laws for his state. Yeah, I think he just finished his third one last year or something. He, he just re, you know, re-ups them every year. Yes, a lot of us re up them. And, and some of them, we only sell the latest edition in print. And on some of them, it's a little bit out of date. I know the Michigan book was written by one of the directors of the NRA. She's a lawyer. <clears throat> but she went on to other things. So the only copy we have is a few years out of date. Then somebody else wrote one. We could use a good gun law book for every state. There is a 50-state directory, but these things come and go, and if the Dems get in, Mm -hmm. you're going to have to use the front end of your gun to protect it, not the statutes. Well, we're doing something here. I don't know if you've heard about it or not. First, we've been doing this since 2015, Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance, and I've been calling all these... It yeah. ca- uh, nationwide, they've been doing resolutions. We've been, I've been calling all these different states, trying to get them to do ordinances so they actually have teeth. But, but it's a, it's a good thing sweeping the nation. Have you heard about that? Well, uh, sanctuary cities, sanctuary counties, sanctuary states mm-hmm. is a way to fight back against laws that are unconstitutional and try to deny the Bill of Rights, right. free speech, right to assemble, due process trial by juries which are going away Um, and of course the second amendment which they want to repeal excise from the bill of rights and just take your your rights away by statute as if you could amend the constitution by (laughs) statute which we know you can't sanctuaries are a good way to fight back and if the sheriffs will stand by a sanctuary statute Mm -hmm. we have one bulwark against what the left-wing people and Democrats basically are doing to disarm the public, especially in light of we're going to get rid of the police and we're going to disarm you. Have a nice day. Yeah. Well, what's what's good about our law is it, well, what happened was we, we did a Second Amendment preservation ordinance, which it made, it, it said that you, well, which is kind of <laughs> silly, but it said you couldn't enforce, the county couldn't enforce any gun laws going back to 2012 that are unconstitutional, and it picked the sheriff to decide what was constitutional. So they raised so much cane about that that we did a second, second Amendment sanctuary ordinance, which makes all gun laws illegal to enforce in this county, with the exception of machine guns and felons, because we could never get get away with that. And so I, I think it's going to be a good. Of course, you know they're they're now saying the sky is going to fall and volcanoes are going to come out of the ground and people are going to be shooting each other in the streets but they did the same thing when we when we passed the chl in oregon and and now we find out that concealed handgun license owners are six times less likely to commit a crime with a gun than a police officer so (laughs) you know they they always say that and Mm -hmm. in fact i wrote a whole series of articles for dylan's blue press uh on the myths that the left uses if they didn't have myths, they wouldn't have anything. 
Exactly. They have derangement syndrome, not just <laughs> Trump derangement, but derangement syndrome. They said when we got permits that there'd be shootouts at stoplights mm-hmm. and that we would, we would shoot the slow waiters. And you know what? We had a banquet, a prime rib dinner banquet, when we passed our uh, concealed carry law. And you know what? 350 people all armed in the banquet hall, and all the waiters got out alive. Imagine <laughs> that. It, isn't that something? Well, so this is what we face. We face lies, deceit, myths. And uh, I'll tell you this, uh, Chris. Yes, sir. I think a lot of it is a medical condition, I, not a political condition. I can These people are hoplophobic. They're terrified of guns. Mm-hmm. They just want guns to go away. Well, there is no go away. If we could wave a magic wand and make guns in America disappear, mm-hmm. literally, the communist Chinese would just make more guns and ship them in. Yeah. The Brazilians would make guns. The Italians, the Russians, everybody who makes guns, there'd be an iron river that would make the cocaine stream look like nothing. Yeah. You can buy cocaine 24 hours a day all over America at low, low sale prices, and it's completely illegal. There's no legal supply chain, but cocaine's available in Hollywood and anywhere else you want it with no legal venue. Can you imagine if they tried to outlaw guns that way? Guns wouldn't stop being available. Mm -hmm. We've had background checks for 20 years. The gangs are all fully armed. These people are deranged. And the people who want guns to go away are just terrified. And like a drowning man, they're grasping at straws, and they don't realize that the laws they're passing seek to disarm the innocent and have no effect whatsoever on criminals who can't even touch a gun under under current law. Yeah, when they passed nine, they passed nine forty one here. Uh, oh, or excuse me, five fourteen. I'm getting mixed up. <laughs> five forty one. Excuse me. <laughs> Several years ago, the guy who the guy who sponsored that bill. Well, what that was was that that was you had to get a background check on your own private property. So you know, if you sell a gun to someone, you they wanted you to get a background check. Uh. And. Uh, they asked the guy who sponsored the bill, they said, that, hey, you know, this is not going to affect criminals. And he said, I know, but it's a good start. Oh, <laughs> That was right after it, he it, said, we don't want to take your guns. <laughs> yeah, that's derangement. It's yes, sir. derangement. Um, they they want to stop crime, but they pass bills that won't, and they know they won't, and they do it anyway. So people like that need medical attention, and we should get it for them. Yeah. Because they're, they're hopeless, yes. and they're affecting our rights. And, in fact, they belong in prison for denial of civil rights. But good luck getting them to do that. Humans aren't totally rational, unfortunately. And this is what we face. (laughs) Yes. Well, you know, what I was going to tell you earlier, that 978, they actually had on their building this big list of guns. And then they they said, and any gun that you can put, that your finger is on the trigger below a chamber. (laughs) Yeah. Do you know any guns that that doesn't exist? I mean, there's not a chamber above your finger? I don't. So the, they, the list of guns is a smokescreen, mm-hmm. and then some of the gun rights groups, the NRA or whoever, will yell, you can't outlaw the Remington model, pick a number. Mm-hmm. But that's not the issue. That's a distraction. It's a diversion. Oh, let's fight against the 20-round magazine. But any gun with a grip, any gun with a chamber yep. over your finger, they can't do that. In fact, in, in the uh, national bill, H.R. 5717, it outlaws a gun that's loaded. It outlaws a gun that's accessible. Uh-huh. You can't have a gun at home that you can reach or that has ammunition in it unless you're under attack. You wow. can load it and get it out while you're being attacked. Otherwise, the gun is illegal and so are you. That's what the Heller case was about at the Supreme Court. Uh-huh. That They had made it illegal in Washington, D.C. to have a gun available until somebody was attacking you. And the Supreme Court decided, you know what, that's a little bit extreme, and they (laughs) struck down the law. And now the Democrats want to reintroduce it at a federal level for everybody, and that's assuming you can get a permit. You know what they want on that permit? An arbitrary, optional, are you a safe person? And they'll decide. Do you represent a risk to the community? What person with a gun doesn't represent a risk at some level? Right. So nobody will, nobody will qualify for the permit. 
<laughs> well, it's all about control. You and I know that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, how, how far do you want to go with that? There's three major parties in America, and they all want power. The Democrats, the Republicans, and the Communists. Yep. Now, it's not popular to say communist, but a third of the world's population lives under communist dictatorship. Mm -hmm. The Chinese communists are a brutal one-party dictatorship. They rule by authority, not by consent, and they want to take over the world. They want to take over the United States. This is stated policy. Now, we want to do that, too. We want to spread freedom and democracy to everybody. We don't care what you want, but we want to spread our system. Mm -hmm. The Chinese communists plan to take over the world economically, religiously, with politics, and a third of the world's people live under communism in Cuba, North Korea, China, Russia. That's what they have. We have communists in Congress. We have communists yes. running for office. You mentioned Portland. Mm -hmm. One of the mayor, candidates for mayor, Sarah, what's her name? She, she goes to a rally wearing a skirt with Mao Zedong, yeah. Che Guevara, Stalin on her skirt. Yep. This is what she stands for. You yep. have to get arrested for that. That's, that's uh, subversion of the United States, and she's running for mayor. And she has supporters. Yeah. Well, we'll People have been so brainwashed. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to take a break right now, but we'll come right back and talk a little bit more about that because we know a little bit about the communists here in Oregon. Do you we'll really? Be, we'll be right back with Alan Corwin. Hello, all you Triglets out there listening to Trigger Warning. This is where we reject political correctness and left-wing insanity, but instead we embrace truth and common sense. You know, there is only one gun group in Oregon that will not compromise on your rights. And that is Oregon Firearms Federation. With all the trickery and evil bills that come from the supermajority in Salem, you need a friend who will keep you informed of these nefarious plans to plunder your rights. If you have not done so, don't delay. Go to OregonFirearms.org and sign up for the free alerts. It will cost you nothing and you will get the truth on what's going on in Salem. There is absolutely no common sense in giving up your rights, so sign up for our email alerts, and if you want to donate, we won't complain, and it will be put to good use. Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no-compromise gun group in the state of Oregon, at OregonFirearms.org. Sign up today. So we're back with Alan Corwin here. Alan, yeah, we were talking about communism, and Oregon... I tell you what, our governor is a communist, and she's in bed with communist China. She's got lots of pictures out there proving it, and <laughs> and I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've seen what the destruction of Portland, they've just destroyed that city, and of course, I'm all for letting it burn, because if it wasn't, you know, they call, they call Oregon a blue state, but we have 36 counties, and 30 counties vote red every time, <laughs> and, you know, I've But the ones with the population... It is, you know, it is population. During the break, and this so often happens, uh, yeah. listeners, I, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but all the good stuff happens during the break because yeah. <laughs> we're free to just chat. Um, the, people who watch CNN and MSNBC and your host said, I can't stand watching them. Mm -hmm. I encouraged him to watch it, and I encourage you to watch it. Know your enemy. See what's going on. Some people only get their news from the networks, and I'll tell you, if you watch ABC and NBC, you see BS. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And if you're watching CNN and MSNBC, and it's all you watch because you can't stand Fox, you don't know there's been riots for 100 days in Portland. Mm -hmm. You don't know it because they don't show it. I put together a montage. CNN was castigated by journalists themselves. And I'm a 30-year member of the Journalism Society, mm -hmm. and CNN was castigated by journalists for standing in front of burning buildings in Kenosha and saying it's mostly peaceful. They had Kamala Harris on and another politician in interviews talking about how Kenosha's been peaceful on the fourth night, and they were having riots, burning, looting, all kinds of bedlam, and they were saying it's peaceful. So the people who only watch CNN and MSNBC and the networks don't know what's going on. They do right. not know. It's being suppressed. 
It's hidden. Mm -hmm. And then when they say, all we got is right-wing militias creating trouble, Mm -hmm. they don't realize the influence the communists have had. You have somebody running for mayor in Portland wearing a dress with Che Guevara, Mao Zedong, and Stalin on it. You have the American Communist Party holding rallies, which you can watch on C-SPAN. The communists are active here. When Khrushchev said... Communism will take over America, and Americans themselves will raise the communist flag. I'm old enough to remember that. Yes. I lived through it. Khrushchev promised we will bury you, and they're in the process of doing it. A third of the world's population lives under communism now. I have to tell you this? No, you don't have to tell me that. They're (laughs) here. They're in Congress. But Bernie Sanders stood up and said, I'm a socialist. And when that was a little too strong, he said, well... I'm a democratic socialist. What's the difference? Oh, Social Security is socialist. That's true. But communism is a one-party state. And the Democrats have announced we want to pack the court so it has no effect on what we're doing. We want to get rid of the uh, filibuster rule. We want to get rid of the state balance and add two more states so we have four more senators Mm -hmm. we want to take over and make this a one-party system and we're communists we're socialists we believe in everything you don't and the country wasn't founded in 1776 have a nice day (laughs) and you think cnn is alerting the public to this and it is insanity isn't it it's not insanity (laughs) it's a plan it's a very careful plan america has a lot of enemies Yes, they and do. the enemies are on the ascendancy by a perfect confluence of events. The virus, uh, I'm sorry, the communist Chinese plague, <laughs> which has forced people indoors and made them frustrated. The ascendancy of the brainwashed youngsters who went to school and didn't learn why America is great and now think socialism and communism are good and don't realize that it's a failed system that puts you under rule. And uh, there's two or three other factors don't come to mind, but you know what I'm talking about. All yes. these things came together. BLM, Black Lives Matter, is two things. Black Lives Matter, like anything. They're an oppressed minority. I get it. So are the Jews. So are the Irish Catholics. Everybody's been oppressed, but we don't go out and demand reparations. Right. But should Obama get a half a reparation because his mom was white? No, yeah. Nobody addresses those things. And Kamala Harris, I saw a picture of where in Africa she comes from, India and Jamaica. So (laughs) how is she an African-American? She's not. And CNN just calls her an African-American. You're right, Chris, she is not. But the news is that upside down. I'll tell you something else. what we face. I'll tell you something else she's not. Not only is she not a natural-born citizen, I'm a Constitution guy. I've been studying it for a lot of years, and I I write a lot of articles, and I, I put one on Readout News, and... It, I put all the evidence there that she's not even a citizen. And, of course, the Democrats think that if you just drop a kid here, you're automatically a citizen. And I don't, I don't know if we'll ever be able to change that. But that's not, what the, that's not what the Constitution says, and that's not what the Supreme Court has said in the past. But she's not a natural-born citizen. Of course, neither was Obama. Neither was Cruz, Jindal, or uh, there was three Republicans. Yeah, Bobby Jindal, t- Ted right. Cruz was a Canadian until 2014. Yeah. You can, I'm sorry. That's uh, it's. If you go back and read the Law of Nations by Emmerich de Vitale, or right, you, you will get the definition of a natural born citizen. It's two parent citizens that give birth to a citizen. <laughs> you yeah, can't, you can't, you can't, ex- you can't have your dad become a citizen two two weeks before an election and become a natural born citizen. <laughs> you know that's an argument that that ship has sailed. Yeah. And it's a very difficult argument to make because the powers that be don't want to unravel eight years of a usurper in office. And if you make those arguments, they just call you names. They don't want to deal with the facts. I had a very prominent scholar say, I don't want your emails anymore, Alan, because of that issue. Really? I I would say you're right. There are a lot of scholars who recognize it, but they're afraid to speak out, and they don't want their reputation sullied. And... You're supposed to be a natural-born citizen. That definition was known. It's yep. written down. Yep. People who get it, get it. But we've moved past it, and there's no way to unwind that clock. 
Well, I, I wish we could, because there's a reason why they wanted a natural-born citizen. Of course there is. Undivided loyalty. We're giving this person the nuclear launch codes. Yeah. And you think you have a divided loyalty if your parents are from India? Well, sure. <laughs> the, the, the president of the United States at the time got it. John Jay said, you know, we should keep the commander-in-chief a natural-born citizen. And Washington wrote back and said, good idea. And they changed that clause to say, you know what? natural born citizen only and it was a good idea now it's completely gone i don't know whether she's a citizen or not but that doesn't matter she isn't and can't become something that she wasn't at birth and yes the right. 14th amendment who, whose allegiance is not divided i get it but we're so far past that and it almost doesn't matter chris mm -hmm. because the Democrats are simply going against the Constitution. When yes. Biden the other day said that Trump is already packing the court, was nonsense. <laughs> when he said he's not acting constitutionally in that regard, was nonsense. And the media just let it run and didn't hold him to account. So what dif uh, I'll, I'll quote another great scholar. So at this point, what difference does it make? Yeah, <laughs> great scholar. You, you know, it, it 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 really annoys me when Democrats talk about the Constitution. <laughs> well, if they would they talk about it, it realistically. You know, I heard there's going to be a great October surprise, and wouldn't this be wonderful mm -hmm. if Trump actually has the 33,000 deleted emails that Hillary feloniously deleted, which, if you read the statute, it's an absolute felony mm -hmm. that she deleted them. Oh, yeah. By, by, even if by accident... But yep. at this point, consider this. Let's say he has the emails, and they are totally 100% incriminating, and everything she did was a felony. What's going to happen? They're going to bring her to trial in 20 days and <laughs> convict her of something, and that's going to change the election? Now everybody's going to stop voting for Biden? What would happen if Biden actually started to blather and foam at the mouth? He already is. Yeah, he he read some numbers. I saw this on Fox, not on the other stations. We have one thousand one hundred and sixty-five thousand two hundred and sixty thousand. He like read a number like that off a teleprompter that was blathering idiocy. Yes. This guy's got to deal with the country and the economy and foreign leaders. He's incompetent. He's just incompetent. Oh yeah, he's about level but, five. But but the other guy, you can argue the other guy's got similar problems. So mm -hmm. these are the two people we put up for president? Mm -hmm. You listen to Tom Cotton, the senator from Arkansas, that guy's brilliant, can discuss any topic off the top of his head, knowledgeable, articulate, but he ain't running. Right. What are we supposed to do? I can't blame him. I, w I don't think I'd want to run for president. <laughs> no. The people who are qualified won't run, and the people who will run aren't qualified. What a pickle. It's a good thing we're armed. But even that, what do you do? If you're armed and you defend your property, they come after you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the Missouri couple, because some of what they did, I wouldn't want to handle a gun like that. Right. That was not smart gun well, handling. Well, her gun wasn't even loaded, was it? Well, that didn't add up. <laughs> you know, I write as the uninvited ombudsman. Mm -hmm. um, they said that they took her gun apart and that the firing pin was in backwards, Oh and couldn't goodness. fire, so therefore, under Missouri law, it's not a gun. I didn't read Missouri law, but it's supposed to be able to fire. What police department tampers with evidence, and then yeah. the chain of command on evidence that that's legit, and nobody in the chain of command in the media understands that a firing pin isn't a pin. It's mm -hmm. a machined piece of equipment that has to fit inside another piece of equipment and attach to a spring, you can't just put it in backwards. <laughs> that right? You know guns. Yeah, you can't yeah. put a firing pin in backwards. Not somebody any gun I've me, ever handled. <laughs> somebody asked me, how big a hammer did they need to hammer it in, and who did that? Yeah. I looked at it. I, I took got a blow-up picture. It looked to me like a wall for PPK. Somebody else told me it was a Bryant. Um... You can't, it won't fit, it won't go, it's ridiculous, the gunsmith or whoever did it, you can't do that. So is that report even accurate? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it'll come out in discovery. The gun wouldn't fire, but you can't, it doesn't work. A firing pin's thin on one end, it's got stuff on the other end, it's a tooled piece of machinery, yeah. it's not a pin. 
Yes. Well, folks, we're talking to Alan Corwin. We're going to take a three-minute break. We'll be right back. Hello, all you Triglets out there listening to Trigger Warning. This is where we reject political correctness and left-wing insanity. But instead, we embrace truth and common sense. You know, there is only one gun group in Oregon that will not compromise on your rights, and that is Oregon Firearms Federation. With all the trickery and evil bills that come from the supermajority in Salem, you need a friend who will keep you informed of these nefarious plans to plunder your rights. If you have not done so, don't delay. Go to OregonFirearms.org and sign up for the free alerts. It will cost you nothing and you will get the truth on what's going on in Salem. There is absolutely no common sense in giving up your rights. So sign up for our email alerts and if you want to donate, we won't complain and it will be put to good use. Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no-compromise gun group in the state of Oregon at OregonFirearms.org. Sign up today. The Columbia County Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance, Measure 5-278, will be on the ballot this November. Make sure to vote yes on Measure 5-278 so that you can help defend the rights of you and your children. Your rights have been under attack in Salem at every session for as long as I can remember. And these attempts at control that will not affect criminals will not stop. So let's make our county a sanctuary for guns and pass the county law that protects your rights. Vote yes on the SASO Measure 5-278. While you are protecting our county, let's remember to fire Brad Witt, who only represents himself, not you. Let's elect Brian Stout to represent District 31, a family man and a businessman. He feels the same pains that you do. Let's send someone to Salem who is in touch with the people and will actually represent you. Elect Brian Stout as District 31 representative. Are you as tired as I am of the constant propaganda from the lamestream media? Would you like to get your news from a trusted source? How about two sources? Go to Readout News out of Northern Idaho, where citizen journalists actually fact check and do research. Readout News Oregon may even be coming here soon. Northwest Observer, another great news source that tells it like it is. Give it a try. I'm sure you will be impressed. It's time that we have truth in the news. So go to Northwest Observer and give Readout News a shot, and you have nothing to lose and only facts to gain. Don't forget to vote in the upcoming election. The majority does not win elections. The majority of the minority who votes does. Your vote counts, so make sure that your voice is heard and get out to vote. Now, back to Trigger Warning, where we reject political correctness and left-wing nut job policies, and we embrace truth and common sense. With your host, Chris Brumbles. Welcome back to Trigger Warning, Columbia County. We have Alan Corwin on the phone. And uh, so I, w I wanted to ask you a couple questions, if I could, sir. You, you have... Sure. You've written 14 books, 10 of them on gun laws or gun policy, am I correct? That's correct. 14. So I'm on my 15th now. I'm writing oh. a book about why science may be wrong. And you can find out about that at gunlaws.com, along with the rest of my work. You can get on my list. I send out editorials from time to time, gunlaws.com. Yeah, I tell people I told people at the beginning to go to that site because there's a lot of information, and the books are fairly, I mean, a really good price. Thank so, you. if you had one book, one book on guns that you, you would think that everybody should read, what would it be? That's a tough one, probably. No, surprisingly, and especially for guys who really understand guns, I would suggest Your First Gun. It's a, okay. a, a basic book, 10 bucks, and you get it for people you know who don't have a gun or just got a gun. If you have a gun, even for a long, long time, you will learn a ton in this. It's not about how a primer works and the mechanisms of a gun. It's the social questions that you have a hard time answering well and that people you know who don't have a gun, who hate guns, who just got a gun, need answers to. Well, I want to get a gun, but my spouse doesn't want me to have one. Where would I put the thing? The thing. Why do I need a gun? Uh, what about the kids? 
Aren't guns dangerous? I love that question. Well, of course they're dangerous. They're yeah. supposed to be dangerous. You're an adult. You're supposed to be able to handle something dangerous. It's got essays on why guns are so important. The media wants you to think guns are too dangerous for you to own, like you're a freaking idiot. Your first gun goes into all the social issues around guns, and it even deals with the fact that guns aren't for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're so afraid of guns, if you have derangement syndrome, I don't say that in the book, but if you're so afraid of guns, then guns aren't for you. And it relieves a lot of pressure for people who go, you know, I, I don't want to have a gun. This relieves you of that pressure. So I would suggest your first gun, mm -hmm. which is at gunlaws.com, and a number two choice maybe would be after you shoot, your gun's hot, the perp's not, now what? <laughs> I love the title. So wh what is your favorite gun and caliber? Oh, I, I can't say I have I one. Uh, I, I really do like a twenty two. Easy to shoot, yeah. ammo's cheap, I can hit anything with it. Um, and the idea of having to carry a gun to be able to draw immediately and shoot a bad guy, uh, I did some interviews, I've done a bunch of articles on that. Mm -hmm. Very hard to find people who had to get a gun out in one and a quarter seconds, get a sight picture and shoot a guy dead. That is an extraordinarily rare situation. Uh, I did an article called Fast Draw versus Slow. Most people's experience in that kind of confrontation they sense that something's going to go down. They get their gun out of a drawer, out of a safe. Uh, they draw it out of a holster, and they're prepared because they sense something's going on. So they need access to the gun. And then a self-defense caliber like a 45 mm -hmm. or a 38 revolver that's highly reliable uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, there's an old joke. I know a guy who was shot with a 9 millimeter twice, but he was wearing a T-shirt, so he wasn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> are you part of, are, are you consultant or something for JFPO? Uh, yes. Uh, I, yeah. I'm a writer, full-time writer, right. and I'm a consultant. I do a lot of consulting work. And JPFO, Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, I'm a consultant to that organization, have been for many years. Mm -hmm. I edit their newsletter. I run some of their programs. I'm part of the inner circle that sort of coordinates their activity. Uh, if you want to get in touch with a group that is really hardcore, mm -hmm. go to jpfo.org. Send them the 30 bucks or what a 35, 25, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, get on their mailing list. They send out information you will not see elsewhere. And they believe in never again, and they put steel behind those words. A lot of groups are not like this, right. but they understand the value of being armed. I, I tell you what, I, I actually did call them. Uh, are they, I think they're based in Seattle now, aren't they? Yes, they moved yeah. out of uh, Milwaukee when uh, uh, the founder, Aaron Zellman, passed away in 2010, uh -huh. and his inner circle sort of took over. It's a long history. It's posted there. Um, we have a guy, a tactical rabbi, who goes around in body armor and teaches people how to shoot, mm -hmm. uh, and a handful of religious figures who work with the organization. Um, and, yes, they're based in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, the phones are a little messed up. Because of COVID, there's not always somebody in the office. Better to communicate by email, and very often those emails come to me, and I respond or help out. We have ambassadors around the country uh, and people running various programs. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, the reason I called them was I love those J Grandpa Jack comic books, and I wanted to get a bunch of them, and I couldn't find them on their website. I can't remember which one it was. I, I believe it's the one on the your rights, and they're great, and they don't make them anymore. So you might have to start writing them. <laughs> you're, you're referring to the uh, Grandpa Jack booklets. It's a series yes. of nine different booklets that mm -hmm. Aaron did and they deal with the fundamental issues of owning a gun, the Bill of Rights. Yes. Uh, there's one, uh, do gun, prohibit do gun prohibish prohibitors have a mental issue? Mm -hmm. Very, very informative. The latest one, which I did with another fellow who's now deceased, um, should Jews learn how to shoot? Mm -hmm. And on the cover, uh, his grandson is saying, 
Grandpa, should Jews learn how to shoot? And Grandpa says, everybody should learn how to shoot. Yeah. And it's a wonderful booklet. Uh, those are available in quantity, but they haven't been reprinted in a while. Right. Some of them are available in quantity, some a little less so. If you go to my website, uh, gunlaws.com, we have the Grandpa Jack books, booklets available. Oh, okay. They're only a few dollars a piece. Right. And some are available in quantity, some are not. And we've been talking about reprinting them. We don't have the original art on oh. most of them or some of them. We're working on it. But like everything, it's a largely volunteer organization. We're working on it. If anybody listening to this wants to be a donor and help us refinance the Grandpa Jack booklets, we would encourage and welcome that with open arms. I tell you what, I, I, I love, I'm kind of a simple guy. I, I <clears throat> When I was studying the Constitution, I, I simplified it to layman's terms so I can explain it to other people. So I, I, I love things like Grandpa Jack books, and, and your, I, I really love your Guns Are Good speech. <laughs> oh, I have, if you Google me and look me up in video, there's a handful of my speeches, and one of them is about Guns Are Good. Yes. Uh, and Grandpa Jack, there's an, they're illustrated booklets like uh, the old classic comics about the bible and things like that uh -huh. there's one on the constitution and use your rights or lose them and he explained grandpa jack explains what the constitution and why it's good uh, the kids come running home grandpa grandpa we learned about the constitution in school and we're going to rewrite it and get rid of the bad parts yeah <laughs> and he straightens them out he says well which parts are bad and at the end the kids go how come they didn't teach us this in school yeah I think that every I think that would be a good idea to get everybody in in like sixth grade to read those things. Yeah, unfortunately the schools don't like it because it doesn't teach them that we started as a nation in sixteen nineteen when the slaves got here. <laughs> we started in seventeen seventy six when we wrote the declaration and then seventeen eighty seven when we wrote the constitution. There's revisionist history and that's coming from the communists. Yeah. Well, I've got to ask you before this gets over, this session gets over, uh, section, whatever you want to call it. You've been in front of the Supreme Court twice, right? Well, I've been there. I was invited to right. observe the Heller case and the McDonald case. W what was that like? I mean, that had to be just... Oh, kind of... it, it's an honor. It's thrilling. You're in a room with such intense mental power and intelligence. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was exhausting. I, I was as alert and alive and focused as any time in my life. Yes. Um, the, uh, the guest list is kept by the marshal of the court, and I was fortunate enough to get on it. My book on the Supreme Court is in the Supreme Court library, mm -hmm. uh, Supreme Court Gun Cases. I wrote it with two attorneys, both of whom have practiced at the Supreme Court. Steve Halbrook won three gun cases. Uh, the Associated Press will tell you that there have been very few gun cases at the court. Um, it's not true. There were 92 gun cases at the Supreme Court before the Heller case. And while many of them were not exactly on the Second Amendment, they all dealt with guns. Uh, one of my favorites was a guy who comes back on his buckboard carrying the shotgun he always carried with him. This is all in the case. Mm -hmm. It describes things the way they don't anymore comes back and his wife is warding off three guys with a she's got a broom and she's trying to stop three guys from stealing their cow <laughs> and he's got the shotgun the court describes he's got the shotgun he always travels with him when he goes out and it's just normal of course he's got a shotgun the whole question of are you allowed to have a gun is taken for granted mm -hmm. and he confronts these three guys and uh, he doesn't want to have to shoot them so he hits one of them over the head with the gun, and the guy dies of a concussion. So is that a gun case? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I would say yes. My rule was if it has a gun in it and it went to the Supreme Court, it's a gun case. Now, is it a Very Second good. Amendment case? Not really, and it doesn't decide anything about the Second Amendment. But to me, mm -hmm. they just take it for granted. Of course, he had a shotgun. He carried it with him for self-defense and protection. And he used it to stop the robbery of his cow. And in the end, they sent the case back down to be reexamined because it was a legitimate use of his freaking shotgun to stop the theft of his cow. 
and there's 91 other cases, and they're all very similar. They all support the idea of an individual right to have guns. One guy finds somebody in bed with his wife climbing out a second-story window, and he shoots the guy. Case after case like that, a barroom brawl, uh -huh. uh, guns on a ship in a mutiny. You don't hear about these things, but all the self-defense cases were decided in the late 1800s, and you find them in statutes all across the country in self-defense law, yeah. and they don't mention this. I'm going to have to go get that book. Can you? We, we, we're about ready to wrap up here, so I was wondering if you could give all your contacts for your gunlaws.com and, and anything you else bet. you want to say. We've got well, about 30 the, seconds. It, it's, it's easy as pie. You go to gunlaws.com. Everything I've got is there. My name, address, phone number, email. You can send me notes from there. Mm -hmm. All my work is there. All my books are there. We carry about 300 different books although we are winding things down a little, so some books are out of print, um, and all my writing is there, my essays, my editorials. Uh, you can go to jpfo.org. I write the press releases by and large, and you can get all those there and the programs they're running. And I've been working as the uninvited ombudsman, so a lot of my work is up there is that. I write it on page 9. There's a link to page 9 there. Just go to gunlaws.com. You'll get it all. If you liked anything I said here, you'll, you'll find similar kind of work there. You can Google me. You'll get paid. Not Google, sorry. You can search me on the web. <laughs> Problems with Google, as you know. I've been using uh, DuckDuckGo, which is a better website in many respects. And you can find me, send me a note, become my friend. I love it. Well, thank you. It's been an honor to have you on today, sir. And everybody go to gunlaws.com. Thank you, Chris. Keep doing the good work you're doing. Thank you, sir. Talk to you later. Well, I want to thank Alan for being on the show today. It was an honor and a privilege that he would take the time to speak with us. If you get a chance to check out his website, gunlaws.com, is well worth your time. We are getting closer and closer to the most important election that we have ever had so far. So remember to get out and vote and encourage all your friends to do the same. Don't forget to vote yes on Measure 5 278, the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance, so that you can protect your rights and those of your posterity. Let's not forget to fire Brad Whitless and replace him with Brian Stout, who will actually represent you, not himself and Crazy Kate. Next week we will have Philip Van Cleve of Virginia Citizens Defense League on the show, so make sure to tune in next Tuesday at 3. As always, keep Columbia County normal and sane, and we'll see you next week on Trigger Warning. God bless. You've been listening to Trigger Warning with Chris Brumbles. You can email your comments to kohi.radio at gmail.com. And listen again next time for Trigger Warning with Chris Brumbles.